Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a radical equation. If you like this video, please comment, like, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell button for notifications. If you don't like the video, please let me know why in the comment section down below. I appreciate all kinds of feedback. And let's get started. So we do have this radical equation with square root of x squared plus 6x plus 11 plus the square root of x squared plus 6x minus 4 being equal to 5 and we're supposed to solve for real x. Okay, now there are different ways to do this problem. So what I'm going to do is I'll actually show you two methods here. Okay, so let's get started with the first one. My first method obviously involves some squaring, okay? And before I square, I can actually go ahead and use some substitution. You've probably seen that too. For example, I can call this expression u, all right? So this is going to give me a slightly simpler equation. Square root of u plus 11 plus the square root of u minus 4 is equal to 5. Awesome. The next step is going to be squaring both sides. Now, here's a question. Should I isolate, uh, like leave one radical on one side and then leave the other one on the other side and then square or should I square like this? My opinion is I'm going to keep them on the same side and square this way. All right, cool. Let's proceed. Now, I'll take this, square both sides, obviously, you know the drill. Uh, U plus 11 plus, you know, the square the second one and then their product is going to look like, okay, it's going to be under the same radical, so I can just go ahead and multiply those. When you multiply these two expressions inside the radicals, it's going to give you u squared plus 7u minus 44. As you know, it's just going to be the sum and the product, and then it's going to equal 25. Nice. Now we can go ahead and simplify this a little bit. Notice that I can just go ahead and add these two. Uh, 11 minus 4 is going to give me a 7, so I can go ahead and subtract the 7 from the 25, which is going to give me an 18 and minus 2u. So it's going to look like this to keep a long story short. I can just go ahead and subtract everything besides this radical from 25. And that should give me, because I subtracted 7 already, that's going to give me an 18 minus 2u. Now at this point, you may want to just divide both sides by 2 because, you know, it's going to make it a little easier. You don't want to deal with large numbers. And then this is going to give you that. There's one thing nice about this is that when you square both sides, something good is going to happen. Let me not tell you right now. Let's go ahead and square both sides one more time and let's see what happens. Okay, cool. So I'm going to square this and I'm going to square that. Obviously, one time is not going to be enough, so we had to do it twice. But what we need to do at the end is to check our work because by squaring, you might be introducing extraneous roots. All right, cool. So this is going to be u squared plus 7u minus 44. And then the right hand side is going to be 81 minus 18u plus u squared. Okay, this is what I was not telling you. u squared is going to cancel out and you're going to end up with a linear equation. Okay, not, not a quadratic, but a linear one, which is kind of easy to solve, right? Okay, so add 18u, so that should be 25u. And then you're supposed to add 44 to 81, which makes 125 awesome everything is awesome and now from here we get a really nice simple solution okay so u equals five nice but that's not the end of the problem because we are supposed to solve for x and you have to go back substitute now what did you call u x squared plus 6x okay great so x squared plus 6x is equal to five beautiful now what is that supposed to mean which uh, this means that i can just go ahead and solve it but you might be thinking, okay, this is factorable, right? Yeah, 5 times 1 equals 5, but it's negative 5. So it's not factorable. What I'm going to do is, you know, we always use quadratic formula, right? Let's do it a little differently here. Okay, what I'd like to do is I'm going to complete the square here. So let's go ahead and do the following. Let's add some number to both sides, which in this case is going to be half of 6 squared, which is 9. And if you do that, on the left-hand side, you're going to get a perfect square. So as you know, in algebra, by sol uh, while solving quadratic equations or something similar, we use completing the square all the time. So that's an important technique that you're supposed to know. So we get x plus 3 quantity squared is equal to 14. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to square root both sides and write two separate solutions. One of them is going to be the square root of 14. The other one is just going to be negative of that. 
And from here, obviously, if you subtract three from both sides, you're gonna be getting two solutions, this one and that one, okay? Now, here's the trick. You need to check these solutions, but substituting these values into the original equation is gonna be painful. Instead of that, we can actually go ahead, since all these steps are valid and good, we can just go ahead and take that and substitute it. So x squared plus 6x is equal to 5. If that's the case, then this is going to be a 5. 5 plus 11 is going to be 16, and then you're going to square root it. And then 5 minus 4 is going to be 1, and then you're going to square root it, and then add those answers. And what are you going to get? Square root of 16 is 4, square root of 1 is 1, and this is just going to work. Nice. So that means that um, this is correct, which means the resulting solutions are correct because these solutions will also impl imply this one. Okay, I just couldn't say imply. All right, cool. So I, sh I told you that I was going to show you two methods. So let's go ahead and look at the second method here. Okay. Now, what does the second method involve? The second method involves a really cool strategy. And I really like this problem uh, because it's a really cool problem, okay? That's not a good enough reason, but anyways, whatever. So this is going to be the square root of x squared plus 6x plus 11, right? Is one of them. And the other one is x squared plus 6x minus 4. And this sum is equal to 5, correct? That was our original problem, I think. Right? Let me double check. There we go. Okay, 11 and negative 4 and 5. Great. Now, the second method involves a really neat trick. It may or may not be easier, but I really like it. Okay, so here's the method. Um, you're going to consider the conjugate for this expression. As you know, complex expressions come with conjugates, radicals come with conjugates. We use that in limits, so on and so forth. So the conjugate for this expression would be this one. But I don't know what it is equal to, right? I only know the first one is equal to 5. But let's call that something. What do you want to call that? How about x for something? No, x is not can't be used because we already have x here. So let's go ahead and use something else. What should we use? Let's call a capital A. How about that? Okay, great. Now, what we're going to do next is actually fairly interesting because we're going to act multiply these two expressions. Why? Because they are conjugates. Beautiful. When you multiply these things like m plus n, m minus n, you're going to get difference of two squares, which is m squared minus n squared, which is going to give you the following. x squared plus 6x plus 11 minus x squared plus 6x minus 4. And the product, obviously, that comes from the right hand side is going to be 5a. Beautiful. Now, what's really beautiful about this is that a lot of terms are going to cancel out. That's why we're doing this, you know. x squared is going to cancel out. 6x is going to cancel out. What? Everything cancels out? Well, not everything, but pretty much everything. 11 plus 4 is 15. So from here, you get 5a is equal to 15. So what? Well, this means that a is equal to 3. And again, there's no problem here because we did not square it. We just multiplied it. Beautiful. So this expression here is equal to 3. Nice. But what is that supposed to mean? Well, let's just write it down. So this means the square root of x squared plus 6x plus 11 plus the square root of x squared plus 6x minus 4, which we already knew that was equal to 5. But we have extra information now that the conjugate of this guy here, the one that comes with the minus sign, is equal to 3. Beautiful. How does that help? Elimination. Okay, that's what we're going to use here, right? You heard me? Okay, that's going to be our method. So we're going to add these equations and then see what happens. Magic, right? Okay, these terms are going to cancel out. We're going to get the same thing twice. So I can basically say that 2 times that expression, which, you know, we can easily calculate, and 5 plus 8, did I say 5? Okay, 5 plus 3, never mind. 5 plus 3 is 8. Okay, divide both sides by 2, which is nice, and this is going to give you a 4. Now you can square both sides. Beautiful, awesome. Okay, I told you everything is going to be awesome, and it is. So this is going to equal 16. If you subtract 16 from both sides, you're going to be getting the exact same equation, that has the exact same solutions. All right, so that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you tomorrow in another video. Until then, take care, be safe, and...
拜。